and welcome to a special meeting of the Northampton School Committee. It's April 1st, 2014. I'm Mayor David Kirkwood, and we'll begin by asking the clerk to call the roll of the school committee. Ms. Ludeval? Present. Ms. Campana? Present. Ms. Ann Hennessy? Present. Mr. Dan Meyer? Present. Ms. Lisa Minnick? Here. Mr. Howard Moore? Here. Ms. Karen Portrick? Here. Mr. Andrew Shelfo? Here. Mr. Ed Zahowski? Present. Present. <clears throat> Thank you. So this evening's uh, special meeting is called for the sole purpose of uh, reviewing and discussing <coughs> the uh, three finalist uh, candidates for superintendent of schools. And obviously our, um, our objective this evening is to ultimately uh, cast a vote on uh, the selection of, uh, of, a, of, a, uh, of a new superintendent. Um, obviously subject to contract negotiation with that whoever that individual would be. Um, uh, before I sort of open up the floor, I, just, I did want to sort of remind people um, a little bit about uh, some of the issues that we have to be mindful <coughs> of, and that is that obviously these are all three very highly qualified, impressive educational professionals. They're currently working in other districts. Some of them are, um, in fact, uh, finalists in other districts. And uh, while it's important that we have a discussion about their, their strengths and, and, and qualifications for the position, I just want us to be mindful that, uh, uh, that we are respectful in the way that we conduct this in terms of how we discuss the candidates. Um, so with that, um, I guess I would uh, open the, the floor for, for discussion. Again, we have three uh, candidates, uh, Lori Kosna, uh, Jordana harper uh John Provost, um, and obviously we interviewed those three candidates um, uh, last week, and, uh, and then there was a community forum um, held, as well as visits uh, to the to um, uh, to the school uh, uh, to our school system, uh, and we've had an opportunity to review the feedback forms uh, that that came out of those. Uh, I'm sure, like me, you've also received lots of emails. Um, expressing uh, opinions and support for various candidates. Um, so I would, uh, I guess, open the floor to, uh, to a conversation, discussion about uh, how we want to proceed this evening. Oh, OK. <coughs> you looked like you were about to uh, well, be ready. I was about to tump my chair over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, would, I was just going to make one comment, a general comment about the, about the comments that we've received, mm -hmm. which is to a lot of, a lot of people um, framed their comments in terms of sort of a vote for a certain candidate. And I want to make very clear that um, what we were seeking was feedback and that, um, you know, so discussion of the candidates and that we are the ones who are going to be actually voting. And that, uh, you know, so while we, I really valued a lot of the opinions and the basis for the opinions, you know, that it's not a matter of counting up votes. I think that's an important point because clearly even the feedback forms we received were, you know, there was a, a, a number, limited number of them, especially coming <laughs> to the overall size of the, of the district. Other comments um, or, or discussion point? Uh, would someone like to um, uh, make a motion regarding uh, putting forth the name of a particular candidate uh, that we could, um, obviously that's the ultimate goal of this process. Before we do that, I guess maybe I would make just a couple of comments. Mm -hmm. um, it, following up on what Howard said, this is, um, it, under education reform law, this is one of the three most important things, or the three things that, that the school committee has the responsibility for, and perhaps <coughs> it is one of the more important of those three. Um, and I, so I, I think that there are people who are concerned that, that maybe we're once again rushing through this, <coughs> and I want to be clear that I don't believe we are, but I respect their opinions, and I understand, and I appreciate their concerns. Um, there have been people who suggested that they didn't understand why we wouldn't be doing site visits and, and clearly wanted us to. <coughs> to those people, I would say that we made the decision perhaps not to do the site visits because we understand that some of our candidates 
are interviewing in other places and that we don't want to take the time and end up losing one of our very qualified mm -hmm. candidates. So that's, that's the rationale for that and I hope people can accept that. It's not that we're trying to shirk our responsibility or duck what we think is the appropriate way to do this, that we are do I, that checks of references have been done and that we believe that we are getting the information that we need. The second thing I want to say is along the lines of what Howard said about voting, um, being a school committee representative is um, a challenging and rewarding position. It's, um, and, and we do it because we're committed to participating in creating the educational future for our students. Uh, having said that, I want to remind people about what you would have learned in civics in middle school maybe, which is about representative government. And while I greatly appreciate the time and effort that a lot of people made to attend the interviews or to watch on television and give us their feedback, and while I actually do consider it to be very <coughs> valuable, I also hope that they understand <coughs> that we as school committee representatives are not able to <coughs> survey our entire constituency and balance out how many people are in favor of this person and, or that person and vote based on numbers alone. We have to vote our conscience. We were elected because people trusted us to make decisions and they're, they're relying on us to do our homework, to make sure that we understand the issues and that we're paying attention. So I would say to them, please believe me when I say that I've given this a good deal of consideration and that I think that this body will deliberate and, and argue the merits of each candidate before we make that decision, but that in the end, <coughs> we're doing what we think is right and that's why we were elected. Okay, I'll get off my soapbox that's now. Fine. Yeah. I guess I, I would only just follow on to that to just emphasize that at, at our, um, that we actually deliberated this issue of the site visit and we took a vote as a body to, and, and we opted instead, instead of the site visit to do an intensive reference checks, um, which I can assure the body that has happened, um, that we've made uh, multiple calls to each of the districts um, uh, and and so we have done that rather intensely talking to school committee members talking to um, in, in some cases superintendents in other cases um, other administrators as well as community PTO etc and teachers and I hope that whoever did those <coughs> reference checks will find a way to weave what they learned into their comments but I assume that if you found out something bad about any of our candidates, we wouldn't be discussing them this evening. That is correct, and I think <laughs> I won't speak for Ms. Hennessy. She can certainly report out, but certainly nothing that um, I found in any of the uh, calls that I made um, would disqualify any of the candidates in question. Yeah. Um, so, um, so just rest assured. And I, and the only other thing I'll say, just anecdotally, it was interesting. I got several comments from people that I talked to in other districts who commented on our choice not to do site visits and, and actually commented that it seems like there's a move away from that um, as a, in terms of the use of time. And they thought that, uh, because again, I think the issue was um, what happened, a site visit is a snapshot and it's sort of an orchestrated, choreographed um, event. <coughs> So, so that was uh, just another piece of feedback that I'd heard from other people who had just done recent searches or had been involved in other searches. So I thought that was wrong. So, uh, yes. Um, I think that we were hasty in making our decision not to do a site visit. Um, I understand why we did it at the beginning. Um, but when I'm looking at the different forms that we, the feedback forms that we, we got back, there's such a, a wide disagreement um, that I think that a site visit really would, would be helpful even at this point. I know that um, when I was on the principal search, um, I went up to the Ryan Road Principal's um, district and we did a site a visit and there was an awful lot of information gained from that and um, as far as the references go I do hope that somebody shares them with me because the only information that I have other than that from the Gazette really have from um, other people here is um, the administrative leadership team's letter which 
only basically focuses on one person. So, I mean, it would have been nice to have a site visit, and I would like to hope to think that we are in a hurry, but we're also hoping to have a candidate or an, actually a superintendent that's going to be here for the long run. And so I'm hoping that if we get into a situation where it's not clear or where we feel we need to, that we're, we're willing to open it back up and, and get a little bit more information. That's my hopes, even though we voted against it at the time. <clears throat> Could I ask just a clarifying question? Mm -hmm. Did you visit all of the sites of all of the candidates? For no, we didn't. No, we did not. So just the selected? Just the selected one, which okay. really mattered. And that's why, and that was one of the reasons why I originally I didn't vote to do a site visit. But now after having read the feedback and seeing how far away some of the comments are, um, I would have liked the opportunity to go and to actually talk to more people within their district. Because also, um, I've received a letter from one of the candidates from somebody where they had worked a while back ago, and which also gave a, a different perspective. And um, those were types of situations that, I, I don't know, I just think that if we were at and did a site visit, if, if it comes out to be close, if it comes out to be a, a disagreement or something, that, that may, may just keep it as a possibility for another determining factor. And I know it's late in the game, and I know we want to be in a hurry to get them, but I'd also like somebody who stays and that we are very, very confident that we um, elected or selected the right person. Thank you. <clears throat> other comments, other uh, feedback that people want to offer? <clears throat> I, Blue, I certainly <clears throat> understand your position and I understand the um, argument in favor of site visits. Um, I just recall the gentleman from NESDAQ, uh, he also recommended, if my recollection is correct, that we not necessarily have to do site visits. I don't recall him saying for sure mm -hmm. not to do them, but I don't think he recommended that we did. Um, so that was just another thing that we had to consider. Um, I think that the comments, the comments that I reviewed are pretty consistent across the board <laughs> for pros and cons for each candidate. I think it's a common thread if someone liked one candidate, if if you liked one candidate, the comments were similar. If you didn't like that candidate, the comments were similar. I just frankly don't know what a site visit could get us um, that reference checks couldn't, or who we would speak to that we couldn't speak to without doing that. I don't feel that we've had any reference checks given to me. I mean, I, okay, we checked our references, that's great. Other than, like I said, that which was trying to um, persuade from the alts letter, um, I didn't really feel that there were any reference checks that I've been able to see or given to me or by anybody else other than, like I said, the, re the report. And I mean, I've checked around myself, but, you know, through the grapevine, through the years of people that I've known through the grapevine, but, and I've actually come up with some information, but, um, even that, it's just the people that I know and, and that side of it, I'm, I just, I don't know, I'm just saying if it got closer. I do understand, and you're, I think you're, that you're right. I don't think that he said that he would suggest it, but I don't think that he suggested against it either. He just, I think it was based on the, the, the time factor. As someone who did the reference checks, um, one thing that, well, one, no one was disqualified, and I, th and I think I only did half of the references, but what became clear was a difference in leadership style that I think was apparent in our interview and was apparent in the comments that we read. Um, and I think that the comparison, so while I appreciate what you're saying, Blue, I think the comparison of a principal visit is very different than a superintendent. And I, and I would want to do a visit to see what a principal was doing in terms of if they were going to be hired for such. But I'm, I don't know what else we would get, and I, I mean that with due respect. Um, I think we have a lot of information and I think uh, many of us have done some other due diligence to contact people we know. Um, and again, I think that the difference, and I think Mayor, I don't know if you agree, the difference really was about leadership style. And I think that was pretty apparent when we, when this body interviewed. I think what I would have known differently was just because of, of the differences from where our faculty <coughs> is coming from yeah. and from where our administration is coming from. Um, I would have liked to have seen that at a school and actually addressed that and seen what the administratives and the principals thought of, of each candidate versus the faculty and just to see if it fell anywhere. I mean, I understand the leadership style, but it's so different. It's just so different. That's what I would like to see. That, that's the reason. 
I mean, I can just tell you that I, I spoke with school committee members, the vice chair of each of the school committees, and as well as an additional school committee member in cases where I could reach that person. And I spoke to all team members, and I spoke to, in two cases, the sitting superintendents. And, and so we did try to solicit information, feedback. And again, it was um, uh, all of it was positive, and all of it was, again, uh, did not provide any indication relative to qualifications. Uh, that there was some disqualifying factor or some negative factor uh, with regard to that. Um, so uh, those, you know, to the extent that if you thought that if we went to there and met with the all team that they would say something different than they would say. No, 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 know, I'm talking know. about the difference between okay. faculty and all. You just stated that okay. you talked to the administration. We did also talk, yeah. so you talked to I faculty. I talked to faculty. That's what I'm yeah. yeah. And if, it was if, very if they had the same disparity yeah. that we have when we're looking at the results. No. I mean, okay. There were very positive comments from faculty, from parents, and from administrators and on all do, candidates. Okay, that was yeah, yep. And again, these were they were not being asked to compare the three candidates. No, and they right, were speaking about their candidate, their right. their person in their district. So but I guess what I, I think I heard said, but I want to make I think it's, it's it sounds like what I heard said, both of you, was that what you learned was consistent with what. We learned in terms yeah. of our interviews and, and, and our, you know, JFK <coughs> meetings on Friday, mm -hmm. and so, so I think that for me resolves the question of whether or not there would be more to gain. In other words, if, if what you had learned in your conversations was like, wait a minute, that's not the person we met, well, then I think we might want to find out. Well, so who is the real? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, but if it's if it's pretty much consistent with who we met, mm -hmm. then I think you know. That answers that question of did we see you know did we get a fair view of this person on you know on our at our interview and on Friday afternoon and and, and then it just is again the difference is but it's just like the difference between on those green sheets there were people who had a more yeah. positive view of each one of the candidates and on the blue sheets there were you know different people so di that that's different people having different views of those same attributes but in terms of the attributes. It seems as though I think we have a pretty good idea of what the attributes of each one is. So other other questions, process types of questions or comments? I think that I was struck by the, the comment that some people made about how we're being a little bit hasty on this, and I don't I don't think that's the case. I think that there's always going to be a desire for more information. You know, there's always things that we can take a look at, um, but there comes a time where you got to say, all right, we're going to make a decision and this is the way that we're going to go and I hope that when we walk out of here tonight that we have a new superintendent. Does anyone else who hasn't had an opportunity to comment want to wish to make any comments or? Can I say one thing? Sure. Uh, one thing I, I want to add is that we had a great screening committee and I think they did a great job. I mean I'm here Ed and Pam but also the other members of the team I think did a great job with this and brought us these candidates who, you know, I trust that of the 22, I think you said, um, who were brought forth, that these were the best, and I trust that. And that part, I don't think it was hasty. I agree with you, Andrew. <clears throat> okay. So. Yeah, you know, I would, again, just, I've been trying to figure out how to organize my thinking in terms of, how, you know, how would <coughs> you decide to hire here. And, and I was, in reading the comments, it seems to me that there's a pretty, I've seen, and you, other people can comment if this is what they're seeing, but I'm seeing sort of a, some sort of a spectrum, and it's maybe not really fair that it's on a spectrum, but I'm seeing it that way, of sort of seeking to have a sort of a low conflict, um, sort of steady at one end of the spectrum, and energetic and innovative at the other end of the spectrum. And I'm not sure those have to be, you know, I think you could be both. Um, as a person, but I think that that seems, for me, it seems to be how the, you know, when, when as you were saying, on some sheets, it's this way, on some sheets, it's that way. Um, it's, that seems to be sort of the framework that people are looking at, and I think, I think that may very well reflect sort of people's view of our district, and whether it needs change, and whether it needs new ideas, or whether what it needs is to sort of settle down and just, you know, do the job. Um, and obviously that's a gross oversimplification because in either case you have to do both. 
you know, you can't just settle down to your job and not have new ideas because that would be stagnation and we don't want that. And you can't obviously just have new ideas without making sure that the lights are on, you know. So, 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 so that's a gross oversimplification, but it, it, that's sort of for me was the framework I was looking at. And, and I think that might be the question that we need to sort of be answering our, for ourselves as a committee is, you know, where do we feel like the district is? Which, which do we feel it needs? Okay. <clears throat> Mr. Ball? Um, I don't see those as absolute either way. I mean, settle down and just do the job or to have an energetic, innovative, creative approach to something. I think that at some point we need it all. Mm -hmm. um, maybe right now with having a, a, um, a the common core and all the, the different things that we have that we have to work on right now, maybe right now we do need somebody who can just settle down and just do the job. However, once we have that job done, if we're looking for somebody mm -hmm. to stay for a long period of time, then I'm thinking that we also need somebody who can be a visionary and who can be creative and, and who's not uh, who's willing to go out there and has a personality that can reach out and connect with people and all sorts of people like <coughs> our administration, our, our faculty, our, our you know, our um, the public, whomever. Um, so I just don't see it as mutually exclusive. Ms. Minnick? I think um, in, from my perspective I sort of agree with what you're saying, but I also would point out that we have, at the current time, I think, an extremely talented um, and very effective administrative leadership team. We have principals who are doing really good things in their buildings, who know what's what, who have ideas, and really, uh, you know, it's it, it's um, it's almost seductive to listen to someone throw out all of the all of the cool trends and the kinds of things that you can do and discuss software or things that we could you know if we had just a little bit more money we could do all of these really nifty things and I've done this in my other district and whatnot but I really think that at the core of everything what we need is someone who can support and enable our administrative leadership team to do exactly what they do best. Someone who can see, see the, the, you know, if, where they need financial help and come up with the money for it. Someone who can see, you know, where they might need uh, professional development or training or for their, for their faculties and come up with the funding for that or in, or some other way arrange things so that we're able to do the things that we already know we want to do. And I'm not saying that that person shouldn't have some kind of a vision for the future, but I also sense that this community has a, a, a dedicated and informed school committee and a pretty, pretty engaged community that has opinions about what our future should look like. And I think that we heard from a couple of our candidates that they would want to tap into what already exists here and and let the community decide its own future and its own direction. I'm I'm sure they'd provide guidance and and you know kind of um, parameters for those sorts of things, but I think I don't think we need someone to, I guess I'm saying I don't think we need someone to come in here and tell us what we should be doing. I think we know what we should be doing, and we need someone to come in here and facilitate that and help us all get on the same page and the same place about what it is that we want. Other, other comments? I just want to follow up with that. Um, yes, we do have a wonderful um, alt team. Um, I just want to, it's also a new, newer, I mean, we have a lot of uh, new positions in, on our alt team, so I, I do think that we need a strong leader also to facilitate that. Just a comment. Other folks like to comment? I mean, would it be helpful for people if we were to just uh, um, <coughs> sort of go around and have people just speak briefly about their Impressions or about each candidate or their choice, uh, who they who they are. Uh, I'm I'm not sure how people want to move this beyond um, where we are right now um, to actually taking a vote. Um, and I look to uh, one of our more experienced colleagues who's done this a few times. Um, I've seen it done a variety of ways, and I'm not sure which way works better. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. 
I mean, oh. if somebody wanted to make a motion for a specific candidate, that's one way to get it started. The other way okay. is to just go around and talk. Okay. Okay. Mr. Meyer. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> well, just listening at the interchange about leadership style, I think the unfortunate answer is you always need both. Um, we have a lot of strengths as a district, but we also have problems that need to be solved. Um, we have areas that <coughs> need to be improved significantly. And so I guess that I, I always bring it back to teaching sort of the roots of your system and that as a teacher you need to be pushing and you need to be also accepting and backing off when that's appropriate. And you know, as, a, as the lead administrator for the district, um, it's, it's, a very, it's a very difficult job because you're perhaps farther away from the classroom where you ultimately want to have the impact. I was very impressed by all three candidates, and I would say that um, Ms. Kazda and, and Dr. Provost um, seem to me the two best candidates for our district, and I have been going back and forth in trying to um, divine which one of them would be the superintendent here that would um, lead our district to the promised land and never leave and never <laughs> ask for an increase in pay. Um, and and uh, fortunately, or unfortunately, neither one has disqualified him or herself, so I'm left with still this difficult choice between the two. Um, both are eminently qualified through educational background, through work experience. Both come very highly recommended. Um, both presented themselves with uh, a great deal of uh, intelligence and confidence in their interviews with us, and I'm sure impressed the screening committee as well, which is why they arrived to us as finalists. Uh, I think that's an underappreciated part of the superintendent's job, is the ability to uh, interact successfully with uh, diverse uh, diverse types of audiences from individual parents in, in a, a conference or a meeting to school committee members um, to the public at, at larger events or forums to their colleagues and the <coughs> mass association of superintendents um, my my not final take because I need to hear your opinions and the mayor has put me in a comfortable position to speak first. I don't know what I did to him. Um, um, you were late for you were late. I, <laughs> no, no, I, I checked my watch. Um, I think that I was impressed by um, Dr. Provost's connection to when we asked him about achievement and challenge. It was individual. It was a person um, that he was focused on. And I find um, I've never ventured away from the classroom. I've never, never thought that that's where I wanted to go. Partly because what I found rewarding in my work day today was two conversations with students where these were students who were not achieving, not moving forward as they were capable. And I had a conversation with them about where they could be um, tomorrow and the next day and through the rest of the quarter and through the rest of the year. And that's, you know, that to me is, that's, that's what our teachers do in this district if we're a successful district. And that's what our administrators at a building level en enable our teachers to do. So, and I think it's easy because of the demands on you as an administrator um, of filling out grant applications of filling out reports for the Department of Elementary and Secondary Ed of losing sight of, of the individual student. I think it's easy to say we're all about the kids, but um, I, I just think the pressures are formidable. Um, you know, to, to deal with district finances would be another thing that would pull you away from that. So I found his answers impressive there. I found his, um, his background educationally. He spent a significant amount of time sort of off of the career track as a research assistant. Um, and I think that in, in looking, you know, looking at his background, I think he maintains that um, intellectual curiosity 
which I think is really valuable um, as a lead administrator um, because I think that you have to do, and I had a conversation with a number of administrators in the district, you have to do everything that you need to do that day in the district, and that's going to take you all day and then some. And then at 10.30 or 11 o'clock when you're about to go to bed, you have to have just enough energy to spend half an hour reading a journal article and coming up with what are we going to do in the next six months? What's the initiative that we could launch to make this district better? Um, and I, I felt like he was a person who could do that. Mrs. Minnick, should we just go around the room and uh, see what <coughs> I sort of like him in the last word, but <laughs> if you wanted me to go now, I will. Um, I, I found uh, that we had three highly qualified but rather different candidates. There's you know, like headline news. <laughs> I think everybody came away with that same feeling. Um, I, I, I guess I felt that. Ms. Ewart Har Ms. Harper Ewart had um, had a sort of a, a confident and, and yet calming, approachable persona. I thought that she would be relatable for for parents or members of the community. I thought she would be a good representative for our community. She's from this area, and so I'd like to think that she might have ties here that would make her stay but I also see somebody who's very smart and very ambitious and very talented and she's been successful <clears throat> so far which also makes me concerned that she wouldn't be staying here as long um, I think from parents and and staff members we got a distinct impression that she was kind of um, Kind of into she was she was a data driven person, and was sort of about m meeting some certain benchmarks, while at the same time she she showed that she did care about students and she did have it, there was some sort of working with kids where they were and you know looking at individual students and hoping to meet lots of people within the district and get to know them, but I also sense that she's kind of a kind of more about statistics and scores and progress and stuff like that and it, it that was I don't know I I liked her very much but I still have some concerns I think that Miss Kasna was oh my gosh just what a smart cookie <laughs> I, mean, I think she was super sharp and so energetic and clearly had a command of a breadth of things but again, in the end, I wonder if her energy was too scattered and would be almost problematic for our alt team to keep up with. I wonder if her, uh, and, and it, well into this, you now see that I have a lot of questions <coughs> and not many answers, but I, I'm concerned that she will, that she would be, um, I'm, I'm concerned that she comes from a district where there's more money and that she would be um, frustrated or perhaps even flummoxed at having to, to do what she thinks she would like to do with our district with the limited funding that we have. I think that um, she showed, um, I, I think that she would be, she, she seemed like she really wanted to come here to be here, and I sensed that she might stay here for a good while. This seemed like a good, uh, that, like she thought this would be a good fit for her. And this is, she she does have uh, career ambition, but she, it, it, not necessarily to just punch some tickets to get to a certain place. I think that she would stay here and, and try to do well for us. But I also am concerned um, Someone framed it for me as, you know, Northampton seems like one thing on the surface, but it's really a very complex city. And you shouldn't be, um, you shouldn't be misled into thinking that 
downtown Northampton is all there is to Northampton. And by the same token, you shouldn't look at, at some of the schools and think that that's all there is to Northampton. This is a, it, there's, there are a lot of layers to it. And so I would hope, I, I'm, I don't know. I, w I won't say I'm concerned, but I don't know about her ability to sense all of that and whether she's thought through that and if she knows how to deal with all of those different kinds of needs and and um, issues and you know interests in Northampton. And finally, as far as um, provost is concerned, I um, some of the detractors said that he was um, not very inspiring and not very exciting and scintillating and all. And I admit that he was very low key. They, there were also some <clears throat> criticisms that he was kind of um, riding the fence, if you will. He was, he was noncommittal about some of the questions that he was asked by people. And they sensed that he was unwilling to take a stand, they thought, because he was, um, he was afraid that that would have a negative impact on his candidacy, perhaps, or he, so he didn't want to upset anyone. I think it was less that than he is, he's been around long enough and has enough experience to understand that things aren't always black or white, that there's often a gray area, and that there are two sides to the issues and he's seeing both sides of them and trying to find, and he also did not want to make a decision for Northampton because he says Northampton should make that decision for itself and then he, his job would be to make it work for us. And so he was, I, I don't think he was being evasive, which was the criticism of him. Of him. I think he was being, I, and I, I have to say I, um, <clears throat> several other things. I very much appreciated the questions that he asked of us at the end of his formal interview with the school committee for the simple reason that I felt that he was, I, I think it, it was almost tongue in cheek, I think he was asking questions that were very clearly related to some specific issues that we've dealt with, but he was being not, kind enough not to embarrass us. He but he was being provocative enough to ask us to really think about how we make decisions and what it is that we value. And that kind of leadership, to me, would be exceedingly valuable for us to have someone not make the decision for us and not even necessarily recommend a decision unless he was asked, but he would he would sort of outline what what we needed to ask ourselves to get there. Um, so I found his questions very interesting. Um, another thing I would point out, and this is just my own uh, personal frame of reference on things, is that in Ms. Kasna's interview, she mentioned um, as one of her accomplishments, bringing back a number of special education students from out of district placements into the district and she named a number of benefits that the district, it was good for the kids because they could be with um, siblings or neighbors or friends. It was good for them because they didn't have to stay on a van for 40 minutes. It was good for the district because it was a cost savings and it was good for their peers because in, the inclusion model works for that reason. All very valid things but I would point out that some of those kids were taken out of programs from the collaborative in her district. As, as our district's representative to the board of our collaborative, I would say that I would have hoped that she would work with the collaborative to find a way to move the collaborative program into her district rather than pulling those kids out. And maybe she did take that step, but she didn't say that she did. And it concerns me that a decision was made without actually working with the collaborative. She did the same thing. If you paid attention later on, she mentioned that she had done some professional development stuff within their district where they brought in someone to do a training and invited uh, staff from neighboring districts to attend that particular session. 
at a, for a fee, and they put that money toward the bottom line. Again, an admirable way to help out her budget, but to the detriment of the collaborative, I would say. And so, again, I'm just, I, I want to be sure, that's, uh, this is my personal thing because I'm the <coughs> collaborative representative from this committee. Those things, I heard those more than some other people would. And so I would want to ensure that, you know, before we hired somebody, I'd want to be sure that she had a commitment to, the, to working with a collaborative that we're members of and that happens to be located in our city. Um, and conversely, I, I have no idea about Ms. Harper Ebert, but I will say that Mr. Provost started his um, educational career as a paraprofessional at our collaborative. And he also subsequently served as a SPED director, I think, at EDCO, which is the collaborative in the Eastern Shore. So I feel confident that not only does he understand what a collaborative is, but I think he also has a collaborative leadership management style which very much appeals to me for our community. I think he would look to involve as many different uh, groups and interests as possible in making decisions for this district. Thank you. Ms. Hennessy, would you like to Don't line, huh? <clears throat> I'm going to repeat some, some things, but not everything. I think they're all um, strong candidates with um, clearly intellectually strong with educational backgrounds um, that are different and I think part of that made it un this decision unique for me. I actually thought um, similar to Downey that um, Dr. Uh, Lori Kazna um, and Dr. Provost came out for me as two, the two um, who stuck with me in our interview. But Lori, Lori Kazna more so, much more so. Um, and it was because of her energy, <clears throat> which was a lot of energy. Um, and I saw that as a very positive thing. I think she was so thorough in her research. I really appreciated that she did her homework when she came here, um, from looking at a school committee meetings to knowing the town. Um, I feel like that's, and doing references, that's who she is. She does her research. Um, that was that came through um, and and the thing that I'm I'm gonna be really quick I'm, I'm gonna line up with not that I'm lining up but my my support at this point is with Lori Kasna and it was a combination of things although this came as a difficult decision um, it was what I saw as a very strong advocacy public support for education um, uh, for public education um, I felt like she would have a learning curve, and I'm not going to say that I don't think she would. I think there would be a little bit of a learning curve that I, I think all three would have in some respects. But I saw her as someone who's absolutely would stay here. She sounded committed to that. Um, and, and when I looked at her resume, it seemed like that's who she was or who she is. Um, and, I th and I saw her as someone who does think out of the box for some of the very reasons I think Lisa had uh, some issues with. I saw that as a positive thing. Um, so that's where I'm gonna, I'm just gonna say that right now. So that's where I am. <clears throat> Obviously I had a lot of the same impressions as did the prior three who spoke, um, both from reading the comments from the um, staff members and the, and the public and um, I think there were some common themes for all three of them. Um, I have to say my initial impression of the three of them left me with a pause that I wasn't quite sure um, where I was going to hang my hat. And in a way, I think that was good because it, it, it enabled me to step back and to look at all of them again and to um, just really focus on what their positive attributes and negative attributes are. Um, I think that some of the uh, parent or public comments about both Lori and Jordana concerned me because 
And not only the public comments, certainly something I, I witnessed my, on my own, is their lack of ability to listen. Um, and I think Northampton is a community that has a lot of strong advocates and a lot of strong voices for what people believe. And with someone putting their nose to the grindstone and just moving forward without listening, I think the public uh, probably won't uh, respect that as much. Um, when I saw John's interview, or when I participated in John's interview, um, he seemed very flat to me until he asked the questions that he asked. Um, I thought the questions were very insightful. And again, as I sat back and listened, as I sat back and, and really thought about this and, and read everything I could read from everyone to get not only different perspectives, but obviously to, to hear from everyone, um, is that he, my impression is that he was listening. He was absorbing and not giving buzzword answers and not telling us maybe what we wanted to hear, but telling us more generally where we might need to go. And another part of it is he's been there. And while I definitely appreciate the energy of the energy and enthusiasm for sure of both Lori and Jordana, they're there's obviously something to be said for that, as well as a more contemplative person who has experience to draw from. Um, I think that Lori would be, cer certainly they would all be an asset. I think Lori would be an asset in her, with her energy and her passion. She had definitely a very clear passion for education and for what she does. And I respected that. And she will certainly move along on her career path however she pushes along to do. I, I, I have no doubt that she will be successful here or anywhere. Um, I got more of the impression that she would do more learning on the job than I think a lot of Northampton are willing to allow her to do. Um, <clears throat> um, other comments and, and things that I drew from both comments and my own um, viewing of everything is um, when, when John, the questions that he asked seem to be almost in response to, I think, what, what Lisa said, where he thinks we're coming from. And I thought that was interesting. And that he was not, um, I think Lori and Jordana and at, some t at some points were, were kind of ev evasive in some ways, um, as was John. But um, I think their answers were more pointed um, and I'm not sure that someone who already kind of knows which direction they want to go is going to be a leader who's going to be able to listen to all perspectives and, and then, you know, be the leader and, and follow the, the road that they want to follow or that, and that the district wants to follow. So I guess that's what I would have to say right now. Okay. <clears throat> Mr. Zahowski? <clears throat> Well, I kind of thought this was going to happen, um, being part of the screening committee and going through and selecting um, those that we would interview and then from there create a finalist list. Uh, we had some very highly qualified uh, applicants to begin with, and then from there we narrowed it down to three to bring to the full uh, school committee. As we did that process and we arrived at the three, I think the screening committee did a very good job of trying to represent different uh, professional styles and then send from what we saw and heard a strong finalist for each of those 
types of styles. And so what I've heard from my committee members uh, this evening is, is exactly what I would expect to have heard because I think as we look at Lori, Jordana, and John, they all offer something different in regards to their personality, but their professionalism and their ability to lead a district as a superintendent, I think, um, is evident. John in his current position, and uh, Jordana and Lori, um, if they weren't to become a superintendent here in Northampton, I think that very soon they'll find their first superintendency somewhere else. Um, so I'm very pleased with the three that we have in front of us, and I do believe it comes down to style and the, the right match for our city of Northampton to, to lead our school district. Um, I can say that uh, I was hoping that after having the opportunity to bring them forward as finalists and have had the opportunity to hear them first in the preliminary interview, that um, would be much more clear to me after the second interview. Um, the, the one that resonated to me when we sent the finalists to all of you uh, continued to interview well, and, and the two others that um, were very close in my mind really interviewed extremely well again, and they didn't share the exact same interview, uh, same in information in both interviews. So I've gotten to know them perhaps even better than most of you, other than Pam, who sat with me on the committee, because um, they continue to share more and more about their professional experience and their jobs. I tend to feel the same way as many of the committee members in regards to two candidates in particular. Um, Lori Kasna, I was uh, almost instantly taken by because of her energy, her enthusiasm, her breadth of information and knowledge across the board in education the fact that she has had the opportunity to work very closely with a superintendent and a superintendent that has cooperated with her to allow her to do many things that a superintendent would do. And so I think she had a great opportunity to be a, an apprentice and to learn on the job with a very cooperative superintendent. And I believe she's very well spoken and um, high energy. I, I would say in regards to John Provost, who is a current superintendent that from our last um, our last go round trying to find a superintendent, we felt a little uh, light in the area of uh, professional experience in that role as a superintendent. And um, I don't believe that's the reason John made it as a finalist per se, but I do know from being part of the screening committee that as we looked at uh, the profile and what um, was needed for our district, it seemed very um, uh, responsible and, and, and right to bring a current superintendent and one who had that experience to consideration of the full committee. And I think he's, he's qualified to, to lead our district. In regards to his quietness and kind of his flat demeanor, I would agree with the committee in the sense that uh, I believe that during those times he's not talking, he's actually uh, having the opportunity to listen and to learn from those people that um, he hopes to, to lead and to represent. Um, the fact that he lives in East Hampton, if he gets the Daily Hampshire Gazette, I think that he's very well informed of what's been happening in our district in the last few years, and he's very well read in the challenges in the direction that our schools are, are currently in and the desire for them to go in the direction of the people who live here. Um, I felt that that was very clear in the questions that he was asking, not only to the entire committee last week, but also to the screening committee. He did the same type of approach with us. His questions were very um, pointed to understanding the district at a, at a different level than I believe Lori or Jordana were capable of knowing simply because of uh, what I perceive and believe as Mr. Provost's um, interest in Northampton through um, 
being a close resident to, to Northampton and understanding uh, what it means to be a superintendent because of his current uh, position. So I, I feel that um, Mr. Provost is a, is a strong candidate for, for those reasons. I'm, I'm also um, very interested in, uh, and I like Lori Kasna's um, knowledge and um, ability to, to understand a district as a whole from various areas and, as I said before, um, her knowledge across the, the board in education. Mr. Ball. Um, I would like to thank the uh, <coughs> committee, the screening committee, for coming up with three very strong candidates also. Um, I found positive attributes to all of the candidates. Um, we had three very smart candidates that um, with different styles. Um, that being said, um, The style that I found, the two that I would go for the most would be um, Dr. Provost and um, Ms. Kasna. And, well, I don't know. <laughs> sort of, sort of not. <laughs> I actually liked Ms. Harper Ewart too, but I just didn't believe that she was going to be a good fit for our, our district. I mean, I, I think she's going to be a wonderful fit somewhere. Um, I just didn't feel a connection with her for our district. And, I, and when I sat in on the interviews with the public, the connection didn't feel to be there as it was with the um, other two candidates. And um, although the public did seem to really like her and um, also. Dr. Provost, the first answer that really puts me off is he's tired of his commute. I heard that um, from people. I heard that personally. And to me, that's not a really good reason to want to come to Northampton. And he's only been in his current position for two years, and now he wants to come because it's closer. And I can understand that. I'm just not thinking that the current position is so similar to ours. He has a very small district where the uh, middle school or the elementary, the other middle school has about the same number of students as Leeds Elementary School does. Um, so I think that the district kind of makes it so we're comparing apples and oranges, um, although he has superintendent experience. I know I'm kind of all over the place, and so are my notes, and, and I have a lot of wonderful things that, that all three of them said. I like Lori. I did like her breadth of knowledge. I, I do believe she has a collaborative style, and I think a lot of it came out in a lot of her um, answers that she said she wants to have as much information as possible to do as much as possible and then proceed. That is a whole different style than something that was said would, what would be the most harmful not to do. Now, while I liked Dr. Provo's questions, to me that's, I do think that it's important to ask what's harmful not to do, but I think it's very important to look at the positiveness of the future and to see what one could or should do. And the answers that we had, while I did like the three follow-up questions that he had at the end, there was one question that really haunted me. And when he was asked about a challenging situation that he faced, and he said that it haunts him, what concerned me the most about it was the protocol, the fact that um, I don't think that it was handled correctly in the first place. I understand the lesson that he learned from it, but as the leader of a district, to go in and to talk with a um, an employee and to get them to the point where he said that they quit because and he said that what he learned from it was he quote told her what the problem is before we have a solution I can understand that as being a lesson that he learned however a lesson that I think that could be learned out of that also is make sure that you have a representative with you when you're talking to him make sure that if you're talking about a very touchy issue such as the woman who he's ex who experienced disabilities, homeless, pregnant, et cetera, make sure that you have a psychologist or somebody in there who can talk to them. And I think that should have been a lesson out of that. And if he had said that was a lesson, then I would have had more respect for the whole, for his way of looking at um, people, basically people. Um, I think they're all collaborative in their own ways. I think that it's a personality difference. Um, I'm concerned with how far apart the um, feedback sheets were. Um, while I admire and respect the alt um, letter and their position, um, 
I think that their position is different in, I mean, as far as when we were even looking who was going to be on the screening committee, we thought, well, do we want somebody who's going to essentially be hiring their own boss? That's their pers perspective, and I do value all of it, but I also very highly value the faculty's input. And um, the faculty wasn't so overwhelming in, in one position. They, they seemed to like, um, well, I'm just going to stick with the candidate that I know they like, Lori Kasna. They also seem to like Jordan Harper. Um, you were, and with everything said and done, I believe that we need somebody who not only can get the work done that we've already started, but who can see the vision, who has the energy. And I think that Lori Kasna did listen. Um, I think she was highly excitable and had an awful lot to say, but she answered the questions. And she specifically answered the questions, where I felt that the only real specifics that I got from, from Dr. Provost were the three questions that he asked at the end. And while they were excellent questions, um, I do think that they wanted, he wanted help understanding our district, but not out of necessarily out of wanting to understand our district, but other than perhaps the choice that he has coming upon him if he's offered another position um, to be able to decide as far as the communities go. So I'm not sure that it wasn't a self-serving side either. It, it sort of felt that way to me a little bit, although the questions were excellent. So anyway, I think that Jordana Harper Ewart was very wonderful. She will lead somewhere wonderfully, but I do think I felt like we were a stepping stone <coughs> to her um, eventually. I mean, I, I think she would move on. And I really liked Ms. Kastner's reasoning for wanting to come here. I understand, having moved back to this area and having been raised here, that there is something that draws us to it. And if you're drawn to it, then there's something special in that. And, and she was drawn to it. She wants to be here. And the commute to me isn't a good enough reason to to, it would have been great a second reason, but as far as the first reason, I would have liked to have seen something about Northampton other than just the proximity. So anyway, I'm sure I'll have more to say, but right now I'm going with, Dr. with uh, Lori Kasna, please. Mr. Moore? Yeah, so same as everybody else. Right? Um, plus, um, I think, I don't really, you know, I don't know that we know, I don't know certainly whether or not people listen um, based on what I have here other than I think they probably all listen, you know? Um, and I guess that just from things like, you know, the fact that in, on, the, on, those, on, those, on those blue and pink and uh, green sheets, uh, at least one person thought Everybody didn't listen, and at least one person. Thought <laughs> everybody did listen. That's true. So I'm not. <laughs> so I'm. I'm thinking they probably do all listen, mostly just based on the fact that they've um, had successful careers so far. So I don't. I wouldn't cross that off. And I tried. I've gone to try to find out again. I've tried to find some way to sort of say, okay, what is? Is there? Is there some sort of crux of the issue here that I can just sort of say, okay. This is the single characteristic, which if they don't pass this, and I haven't been able to find that. <laughs> um, because they are all qualified candidates, and I, and, I, and I think that's really important for us to recognize that they are all qualified candidates. That, In fact, if we hired any of them, we would, we would have a different experience with each one of them, but we would certainly be able to um, thrive. Um, I think I just end up uh, saying that I, I, I sort of, for me, it, it ended up being a little different from what I said at the beginning in terms of what I thought the impression was between sort of lack of conflict, big ideas. Um, it was sort of a different way of sort of seeing it. it was sort of where do I feel sort of comfortable versus challenged? and. Um, and the right balance of a little bit challenged and a little, you know, I want to be comfortable, but not too comfortable with this person. And I, and I want us to be comfortable, but not too comfortable with this person, because I think we do want to be um, challenged. I think we do have a need to, to change. And, and um, 
and again, so f then it comes down for me uh, between uh, Provost and Kasna uh, is, are the people who are on, and they're on sort of either side of that. I feel like, in a odd way, I, th I feel sort of like uh, Kasna for me would be the one that'd be more challenging, mm -hmm. and um, and uh, Provost who'd be more comfortable, and I, that's where I'm weighing it. Is, is it too comfortable? Too challenging, and the challenges. I mean, the challenges. It's interesting. The challenges for Kazna are, yes, this would be the first time she would be, because her previous experience, she has had a superintendent, just provide that support, um, and so that would be one of our challenges. Would be to, in a sense, provide her with that support, um, because if we want a leader, we have to, to a certain extent, be willing to follow. Uh, well, to a large extent, we have to be willing to follow. Um, and we have to do that for anybody we hire. So then the question, so that's, again, it might be a little bit more difficult with somebody who hasn't already been a superintendent. Um, with provost, I end up just saying, you know, that's very comfortable, and um, yet I wonder if, I, I don't feel quite as challenged in terms of, uh, seemed a lot of times he's, he, and it's, it's a useful leadership tool to sort of reduce the problem, to sort of discard the things, these are off the table, these are off the table, and make it simpler. But in the end, we live in the real world, which that's not actually happening. You're only doing that as, a, as, a, as an analytical tool to make things simpler, so you just have the one thing to decide on. And I felt like um, Kasno seemed much more open to you know, recognizing that there are going to be some things which aren't going to be able to be done, but that doesn't mean that they're off the table either. Um, it had to do with, she was talking about the start time, but she compared it to her district where apparently they don't have, they have a seventh and eighth grade, and, and they're trying to, want to expand it to a sixth through, through eighth grade middle school. And sort of that sort of, so that's what somebody we want to do, but we can't do. And recognizing that that sort of can be like that, that sort of messy place. Mm -hmm. And um, I think, so in the end, I think I really appreciate that view, the, the ability to sort of see that, okay, look, these are things we want to do, we can't do them for a variety of reasons. She, she acknowledged because the community wouldn't be ready for it, because you don't have the money for it, because you don't have the, whatever, the, the other infrastructure that you need to do it. But that doesn't mean that it's sort of off the table. And I think I actually, in the end, I think I end up really supporting um, Kazna a little bit over Provost, really just for that, because I think I appreciate that willingness, the willingness to sort of have that messiness be there, which I think some people will see as not being good leadership, but which I see as being very realistic view of the world. And if you're able to explain it, that, you know, well, we're not going to take it off, we're not doing it. Um, I actually, I really appreciate that 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 view, and um, and I think it's for me anyway uh, easier to work with than this, what I st strikes me as much more frustrating sort of. Um, well, we're not talking about that now because well because you know it's it's not something we can decide about right now. It's something that's in the hands of the state or it's in something that's in the hands of you know. It's like well yeah, but still you know it does impact us and maybe we should be thinking about it even though true we understand we can't do anything about it right now. Um, and, uh, and I much more appreciate just sort of having it still be on, things on the table, even though they are, we all know, not something we can do right now. So I, I ended up, I think, supporting Kazna. Okay. Mr. Shaw. Um, I want to echo what everyone else said about the complimenting the screening committee. I think we did look through the, the materials for three very well qualified candidates. Um, as I thought about who I would want in our next superintendent. I, I kind of came back to, to three things, and, and two we can kind of have some control over, and one we really can't. Um, but one of the things we heard from the last superintendent search was that we wanted to have someone with superintendent experience. We, not that it wasn't a requirement, but that's something that we would prefer. Um, we also, uh, as Lisa Minnick, Ms. Minnick mentioned, that one of our responsibilities as school committee members is to hire the superintendent. Another very important responsibility is the budget. Um, so I wanted to have someone who had uh, budget experience uh, in a very deep and, and real way. 
those are two things that I think we can control because we can look at these candidates and say, yeah, they, they either have it or they don't. The one, the other item that I think we all want is this idea of stability. Uh, we want someone who's going to stay for a long time, and we, we can't control that. You know, that we, we can't make them stay. We can't chain them to the desk. Um, so those are kind of the, the three things that, that were, were playing out in my mind. And as I thought about the interviews, and as I went over uh, the comments that, that I wrote down, I, when I first sat through the interviews with Dr. Provost and I saw his manner, um, I actually, I, I remarked on that, and, and I think it was kind of, some people have used the term flat, um, whatever, but as I looked at the notes that I wrote about what his answers were, I was really struck with how kind of thoughtful they were. Um, and. I think it's also uh, important to really consider what the alt team has to say, because you were talking about, about leadership, and I think that that uh, what Ms. Minnick said about leadership is important. That we want a leader who can. I want a leader who can support and enable our school district, our leaders, and our other administrators and teachers, and also to guide them. And there's lots of different ways to to do that. Um, the other issue that has come up here, which I find very interesting, is this kind of uh, perceived tension between, you know, high energy and kind of uh, dreaming the impossible dream and don't take it off the table because we can't do it, versus these are the things that we have to accomplish and how are we going to accomplish them? Um, and I'm going to step on my, uh, my 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 literature graduate school work for a moment and drag out uh, Robert Frost, who who always wrote his poems in rhyme, and he was asked why once he did that. And he said, it's very important that a poet learns how to move easy in harness. So you, have, you put restrictions on it, you have to be able to move within those restrictions. Um, and as I think about that, and I think about uh, Dr. Provost's experience as a superintendent, uh, we're hamstrung. Every school district in Massachusetts, from a variety of reasons, whether it's budgetary or regulatory, whatever it is, um, and it's really appealing to me that, that we can have someone who has that experience at, at moving easy uh, in harness, and that's where I come out as I look at the candidates. Um, yeah, so um, first I want to again thank the um, search committee. Um, it was a, a great group of people that we worked with, and there was um, great insight um, and concern about who the next uh, superintendent was going to be. And um, as I um, got to see the candidates, um, you know, a second time, uh, the person who really stood out to me was Lori Kasna. Um, I um, really appreciated, um, I think she would be a good listener. And then also, in addition to just listening, I think she would take into consideration what it was that she heard people say, um, even if um, it didn't match necessarily what she thought. Um, and sort of use that to come up with, uh, you know, a balanced and forward-moving response. Um, I also, you know, really appreciated that she talked about um, setting programs that would that would um, last just beyond her running them. Um, that that was really important, and I didn't I didn't take from that that, you know, that she didn't. I took very strongly from her that she wanted to be in Northampton and that this was, you know, the destination for her and that she was very intentional about um, the timing of applying for this position. Um, but I also sort of took from that also idea of laying the groundwork for programs that it was, that it's just sort of beyond one person, that something has to be kind of set, you know, the blocks have to be put in place, the foundation has to be put in place. Um, so I think, um, I think all the candidates, you know, the three candidates that we saw um, were all strong, um, you know, and each would be capable and each would be different. Um, but from my perspective now, you know, I'm leaning um, towards Lori. I guess as chair, I'll take the <coughs> prerogative to speak last, so lest I wouldn't uh, be influenced in how I run the meeting, I suppose. Um, uh, again, I, I thank the um, I thank the screening committee and I thank our two colleagues who served on the screening committee and our vice chair who chaired the screening committee. Um, I was also very pleased as well that we had such a, a, a much sort of stronger um, set of applications this time as I think we thought we might given the timing and the changes in salary. Um, I also very much appreciated um, the, the getting to meet these three candidates. They're definitely um, all 
uh, very uh, highly talented, uh, uh, clearly have had uh, very successful uh, backgrounds that have brought them to this place, and each bring different strengths and, and attributes um, that I think will uh, could serve them well in, in, a, in a leadership role. Um, my my uh, my choice uh, is uh, is Dr. Provost. Um, uh, again, I, I think um, in in looking at the candidates and looking at their skill set and looking at the experience that they bring um, to the job. Uh, in look and and I think that you know it's interesting because um, it, uh, you know. I, we, it's, we try to often, we have a short amount of time to interact with these people, so we really, everyone tries to put them all in a box, like, you know, he's the quiet guy in the suit, and she's the person with the hand motion, you know, and all that kind of guy, which I often say, what's wrong with a quiet guy in a suit? But, um, uh, but, but that's, but, you know, it's funny, when you talk to people who, when you actually talk to the people that work with them every day, you get different impressions than that, than what you see. And also, there, you know, there's nerves. I mean, I saw nerves during our interviews among the candidates, which, um, uh, which can also, you know, contribute to maybe the way they come across. Um, uh, but but for me, I think it's a combination of skills. It's an experience. It's the looking at the um, the positions and the districts, frankly, that they've served in. Um, and I think um, having uh, you know, been mayor uh, during my time as mayor, having had the opportunity to work with um, sort of a, a superintendent in training, if it, as it were, someone who was new to the job. Um, and, and also having an opportunity to work with a, 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 a very experienced superintendent, sort of really two ends of the spectrum. Um, you know, we have a very experienced um, and, and very capable and extremely talented alt team, uh, which I think we should be very proud of. And even the new hires that you mentioned, I think we've sort of continued that and strengthened the alt team. Um, and I think back to the, to the, um, to the workshop we had recently uh, with um, with Ginny Tate, where we really talked about the roles of the, the superintendent and the school committee and the building principals, and sort of how ed reform has kind of flipped everything on its head, um, and that really the and, and sort of defined what our role is, what the superintendent's role is, and really the the really the front line, very authoritative role that building principals have. Um, I really view the the job of the superintendent as to to be that. Um, you know, to help lead that team um, uh, and, and really try to reflect the, the energy and the passion of that team and, and, the, and the wants of the district and the needs of the district and really try to bring us in, a, in the direction that we want to go. You know, and I also can't discount because of the, the dual role I have in the city government, the budgetary issues um, and the experience with budgets. Um, and, uh, and, and having um, done research on the candidates and their budgetary levels and what the kinds of budget uh, involvement they've had in the budget making process, I think that's also, you know, weighs very heavily uh, with me. Um, uh, but again, it's, it's uh, all three candidates uh, are, are outstanding. Uh, they all uh, obviously are very committed to education and to, to the work that they do, and they've obviously wouldn't have come to this point. But for me, uh, and again, I, and I'll mention the all team again. I do, I do put great uh, weight into their evaluation of the candidates as well. I, I do, I, I must do that um, because again, these are the people that will be working most closely with the person that we select to be the superintendent. Um, clearly, parents will have interactions and impact, but uh, they will be the ones working. Um, and, and there's that team that we really want to try to build and solidify and have stable and really, you know, I feel like we're in a good place. We want to continue moving in a positive forward direction. And I think that uh, Mr. Provost gives us the best opportunity, Dr. Provost gives us the best opportunity to kind of um, uh, uh, move us forward to where we are right now. Um, and so that's the, the choice that I would, uh, that I would make. So we've all had an opportunity to kind of talk about this and, and, uh, and offer some comments. Um, Ms. Minnie. You, you alluded to some of the, the, the conversations that you had in checking references. I wondered if there was, I think that Ms. Hennessy 
kind of gave us her own personal perspective of the candidates and what she felt, but I just wanted to give each of you another opportunity if there was something else that you wanted to add in terms of reference checking. Is there something that you heard mm -hmm. that you thought was particularly interesting that you hadn't gotten from interviews or something that you think would be worth sharing with us? I'm not saying there is. I'm just asking if there might be. Just curious. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, you know, again, I think we, um, as, as I think Mr. Moore alluded to, we, 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 I think we, in many ways, the conversations confirmed a lot of what we saw and a lot of what we heard. And in fact, some of the, you know, some of the themes that, that candidates tried, that they asserted during their interviews came through in those conversations that I was having with, with district staff and administrators, um, including some of the examples that the candidates used. And, um, and in some cases, you know, there, there, you know, um, there, there, there's, uh, you know, there's some, f there were some fairly, you know, big examples that were given in the interview, so those stand out probably for people. Um, in terms of, uh, again, I think it confirmed a, a lot. I think that, um, you know, I think the difference, of course, is in the calls is that in, you know, in one case you're talking to someone about a sitting superintendent who's already doing the job and doing many more facets of the job. Um, as opposed to, in some ways, you're asking people to speculate about, um, you know, how do you think they would move in that role and how would they, um, and, and again, I think people all thought that uh, they had the qualifications. Obviously, there was a, you know, conceded that there could, that there could and would cer most certainly be a learning curve, for certain aspects for the folks that weren't superintendents. Um, uh, in terms of, you know, surprising things or things that people might find surprising. Um, uh, I, I, in terms of in Dr. Provost, for example, uh, you know, I, I came away with a different impression in terms of his personality and his, um, his engagement in the community um, than I think maybe came through. Um, he, he is a, he's an avid tweeter. He has a Twitter feed. Um, and, and, his, and if you read his Twitter feed, he's very actively engaged in the community, not only promoting events, but he's also engaging in some interesting and high-level conversations with people on Twitter about educational policy and about, and so, um, so that was kind of interesting to me, because I think that, you know, if people were lining up the candidates at the interviews and you said which one, you know, is the mad tweeter, probably he wouldn't have been identified that way. Um, uh, so that so that was sort of an uh, and I didn't know that he didn't mention that he didn't it didn't come across in in his materials and so of course I then had to go look at his Twitter feed so um, so there were some surprising things like that um, but again I think that the um, you know pretty much it it played out as you would expect it to play out no nothing disqualifying and obviously these are people that um, that are well regarded in their in their districts so that's sort of the takeaway. And for me, nothing was really surprising other than a funny comment uh, that Dr. Provost was this intellectual powerhouse with $6 million vocabulary, which I like that phrase. <laughs> um, and, you know, all three, um, but I think Jordana, who had, you know, there were stellar recommendations. People mm -hmm. have, you know, incredible respect for her. Um, the sadness with which people in, for Dr. Provost and uh, Ms. Kasnett, of the thought of them leaving was profound on all levels. Building principal and um, and a department head in, for actually building principal for both and um, a teachers for both were just really the thought of them leaving was um, you felt it. Um, and I will say I'm going to add not this isn't about references, but I will say that the leadership team here I felt very very clear about my decision and that I have such respect for this leadership team and. For me, my decision came down to because they're so strong. Mm -hmm. I felt that um, having someone who didn't have the, um, the superintendent, but did have central office experience, um, I felt more confident in that. But I will say that that was hard because I do respect you know, their opinion. Ms. Duvall. Well, I also um, like the fact that Ms. Kasna is a grant writer and um, also a lawyer. And also, in her work, she has um, well, worked as an um, ed surrogate parent all the way from 2008. It, to me, she 
ha the energy that she has, she doesn't just, I mean, she uses it for a lot of different things. She's a board member of something else, of the New England Villages. She's an Ed surrogate par um, parent for Plymouth Mass and has been for years. She just seems like she would be very committed to us. The fact that she's a lawyer um, and a grant writer are both very beneficial as, as, as I look at it. And um, she comes from a large district. So even though financially it's different than ours, um, it, it, it is similar, more similar in size. And while I was one of the people that um, touted superintendent experience before, the superintendent experience that he has is of a small, small, I mean, there's 45 teachers. And um, while that's good, I think that both of the women are bright enough to be able to get right in and do the same thing with, based on the experience that both of them have also. But I just wanted to mention the fact that she's a grant writer and a lawyer. I mean, we're getting bonuses there. <laughs> Some would say. Okay. So um, are there other comments, other uh, questions? Um, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Ms. Nykerchuk. Just, just a quick comment that was mentioned by some of the committee members that um, I forgot to mention is that when I was sitting on the other side of all this listening to the superintendent search the first time that yielded um, no superintendent, it was, in, from what I saw, the most important thing of the school committee was to get a superintendent with experience. In fact, the salary was raised, salary level was raised if my understanding is correct, to, or range, I should say, in order to um, attract superintendents. Um, so I think it's important to remember that. I think it's important to remember where the committee came from and why the committee did the search the second time. Mr. Meyer? Um. So, in, in looking at, at Ms. Kazna and um, Dr. Prowse, I guess I thought that the, the perceived differences in terms of energy based on a short meeting and some superficial, I mean, to me, that's completely unconvincing um, because people make first impressions and I don't find that they're always accurate. And I think as Mr. Moore said, if they, if they were not people of extraordinary intelligence and skill, they would not have thrived and they would not, they would not mm -hmm. have people expressing, yeah. you know, palpable sadness over their departure from the district. Um, in, in trying to compare the two, and I, and I guess experience as well, I do, you know, first thing I do is I pull up the DESI, M, you know, DESI profile of the district and say, okay, this is not, you know, this district is, 3,200 for Pembroke, and it's you know 566 for North Brookfield. So it's a very it's a very difficult decision, um, and I've you know gone back and forth, uh, like Mr. Moore said, looking for that you know that thing that is going to tip the balance. I will say that the administrative leadership team has worked over their careers with a number of different superintendents. Mm -hmm. And what you need to be a good superintendent is, is, is or can be different from what you need to be a good building principal and can, is different, or can is different from what you need to be a good classroom teacher. Um, they're different roles. And so I, I do place weight on their recommendation and the conversations I've had with them. Um, and also, we have an interim superintendent right now who is a very experienced superintendent who I have agreed with on some issues and disagreed with on some issues, but who I've found to be a consummate professional who does her job very well and her, her experience shows that she has learned the job well. And she did write a letter to us as a school committee saying that, in her opinion, that Dr. Provost was a stronger candidate. And, well, again, it's, that's, not dis you know, that's not dispositive of anyone who has communicated with me 
personally um, that I know, and obviously we have recommendations from long-serving superintendents from these districts who I place a lot of weight on their judgments. Um, I have worked with Dr. Nash, and I, I have to take seriously and place weight on her recommendation because she knows not only the job, but she knows the Pioneer Valley, and she also knows this district. And so I think that, that level of knowledge of what will be required, not just to be a successful superintendent, because I think we've all said all three of these candidates are going to be superintendents and are going to be successful, but a successful superintendent in this district uh, placed a lot of weight on that. Ms. Duvall? Um, I just wanted to comment on that. Um, as far as the uh, superintendent, I went in today and I, I spoke with the superintendent and I, and I spoke with her about the different candidates and the letter that she wrote and I asked her and she stated that she had a bias based on having a similar leadership style and that she found um, you know, the other candidates or one of the other candidates to be very exhausting um, because of the high energy. Um, that to me is just, I mean, it's a personal, it goes back to the, the personality of the three different people and, and I, you know, I mean, that's all I just wanted to say that it was based on, because I asked that. You know, if, if there was a bias, if, if you know, what was it based on? And she said that she may have a bias on having a similar leadership style and well, I guess she said connection. Saying that she might have a bias versus, I don't think that says that that was the basis. No, I'm not saying that that's the, the basis. basis. It was a global judgment on right. her about, you know, like her obviously. Right. But the thing that I wanted languages. to know, though, is the faculty is very, very important as far as how they see and what they see. And they did not have. That concerns me. I mean, they may not be the ones working right there, but they're also not hiring their boss. They're not um, influencing that. They're the people that, that are, are affected very, very much so by all of the decisions that are made. And it concerned me very much that the faculty did not have the support for Dr. Provost that I would have liked to have seen at all. That was my concern. Based on the... On the based reviews, on the, the on the reviews the, and also based on different teachers that I've talked to and, and have gotten a letter I mean um, we have a very respected teacher who wrote us and um, you know one of the candidates even brought up having gone into her classroom and and it being very dynamic and we all knew exactly who um, we were speaking about uh, right off the bat but um, and she was very very um, she likes Miss Kasna also and I liked the reasons that she liked Ms. Kasna, which related also to mine, because I may have a bias of a similar style. I'm not sure either, but um, <laughs> put it right out there. But um, it just really concerns me as far as not giving the proper weight to the faculty's opinions. And um, because I would have a bias if I were an administrator, um, wanting to pick my own boss. I mean, it would be nice to pick somebody who may not be as, you know, who may go more along the lines with what we as a team want, as opposed to being the leader and, and guiding you as a team. Or I'm not real sure, but I mean, it would be great to pick your own boss. I would just really have liked to have heard from more of the faculty, but the faculty that I did hear from was pretty consistent. And, and um, things that they wrote about him. So that's what I wanted to say. Oh, sorry, Ms. Minnick. Picking one's own boss aside, I think that, um, and I recognize that it's not, it, it, that it may not have been possible for all faculty members to have attended the sessions, but I just want to reiterate that the number of, of surveys completed by faculty members and turned into us, and the number turned in by parents was a minority of the group. But the letter from the all team was unanimous by all the entire group. And if I had gotten individual calls from individual all team members saying a variety of things about different people, I would have weighed those carefully. But when the group came together at the crack of dawn in order to discuss their thoughts and write a letter to us. I would be loath to ignore that and not give it due weight. And I don't think it's about picking one's boss. I think it's about <clears throat> knowing what the initiatives are in their individual schools, knowing what the issues are that are facing our district, 
knowing what the needs are and knowing how they operate as a team and coming together to say that they see themselves able to agree on a leader and that and work with that person i think they were making a huge commitment to come up to to send us that letter other is Anna. um I, I also was really struck um, by the alt team's letter and certainly and highly respect, um, you know, their thoughts and, um, you know, being very new to this process, the biggest thing, you know, also knowing that um, when you sort of look at the percentage of people who, you know, did, were able to go to the forums, you know, it is a, sm a very small percentage of people and then who then would take the time to, you know, write, fill out the surveys. But what really struck me was, was the, the, um, the stark difference between what the faculty said and the all team said. And I'm left really wondering what's the disconnect there. Mm -hmm. And I don't have an answer to that, but that's really like, I was just, when I read that letter, I was like, wow, that just seemed to be such a great disconnect. Um, and so I'm just kind of left with that. I think in some respects, maybe the disconnect, and I'm, I'm just thinking out loud here, but I think sometimes that it has to do with, I think that the faculty is looking for the more visionary, the more um, exciting type leader. And, and we are talking about someone who is the educational leader for our city. We're also talking about someone who is, whether we like it or not, in most cases, the face of our district. We're talk but we're talking about someone that has to both um, motivate and excite faculty and staff, um, who has to, you know, uh, work closely hand in hand with Alt. Someone who has to garner support from parents and businesses, someone who has to, you know, um, keep a good relation, a meaningful relationship with the media. It's, it's a, and I, so I think that each different group is, is looking at it as what's in it for me. And I, I hope that the alt team is taking more perspectives than just the one individual perspective of any specific group, parents or staff or someone else. I hope that the alt team is trying to balance all of those things when they come up with a recommendation. Maybe I'm giving them too much credit, but I really like them. <laughs> I think they're a bunch of cool people. <laughs> so. um, Mr. Meyer and then Mr. Holt. Um, so I guess that for me, the difficulty is trying to characterize the views of the staff on this tiny, Sam non-random sample of interviews. I mean, I just, I, I tried to take from them what I could, but again, just as when you're a school committee member and you receive a letter that you, you can't, you know, or a number of letters even, you can't say, I'm gonna base my judgment based on this sample because I have no way. And I mean, I, and you know, I responded to Dr. Prof's question by pushing back against the, you know, the, the there is Goldilocks and there's that just right, you know, that, that the extremes are always wrong and if we just get in the middle, it's just right. I don't, I don't think that's accurate all of the time. It works in some situations. Um, but it's just very difficult for me to try to, we have over 100 ESPs, we have over 200 faculty members, um, we have a lot of other people, um, custodians, clerical staff who work in the district and uh, you know, food service workers. We've got hundreds of employees, and we had 30 surveys, and it, so it was very difficult for me to try to to leverage that you know leverage that small sample into a sense of what the faculty is going to get, or what they desire, or even you know what the staff in general desire from the superintendent. Um, and, and the same I would say would be true for parents. I mean, I looked at those surveys, you know. Those people um, took the time to go to the meeting. They are, you know, some of the most motivated, most involved people in public education in, in Northampton. Um, but 
they are, you know, they are a small group among many people who care and may just not have had the opportunity. Um, so, you know, the advantage for the administrative leadership team is that being a small group and having opportunities not just to interact um, in an interview situation, but also during the day, uh, they had a different perspective, which, again, you know, if they could have spent nine or 10 days in the district touring all our buildings and meeting all our employees, that would be great, but it's just, it's not gonna happen. Uh, Mr. Moore. Yeah, I'd like to sort of make, I think, in terms of that, I, I too was struck by the, the differences, but I think another factor to put into it too is just like, we're gonna end up with a unanimous vote here at the end of the night, but we've had a large discussion. Um, the all team sent us a letter, and I, I don't know how many people were part of that, but it's a dozen or so folks. And um, right or wrong, I make the assumption that when you have that many people, you're gonna have wide-ranging opinions, and that when it gets distilled down to a unanimous opinion of a group, that there, it might not be quite so um, clear-cut if you had looked at just the discussion as opposed to the, the letter which resulted from that discussion. So I make the, the sort of the, similar to what you were talking about, about you know, what you take from from the surveys that were handed in, the feedback forms. Um, I think I take a similar sort of grain of salt with the, with the letter itself in, in that I think it represents, certainly it represents, I, for me it represents, not only in terms of, it, 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 but in the form of taking, that it took of being unanimous, saying that really a, 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 you know, a very strong position on the part of the alt, uh, again, to avoid conflict and controversy and it, them valuing that very highly as opposed to, because they could have just as well given us a dozen feedback forms, right? <laughs> um, and, and, and which would have, so I, know it's, I, I, so, I, so, I, so I think there's sort of a larger statement they're making, not, not the specific one, about that they really do want to present a, you know, a clear, clear sort of idea and avoid getting caught in all the what we're doing now. Um, so, so anyway, I, I think it's, it's for me, I, I think while it was, it was a sharp difference, I think the reality is it may be much more spread across the continuum than, than it appears. Mr. Ball? Um, that's basically what I was going to say, <coughs> say that um, I really would have preferred that as opposed to the, the um, feedback forms being filled out by unanimous and feeling railroaded um, by, by by the um, statements um, there, um, I would have much preferred to have all the all team, the members of the alt team, even if they came up with the same unanimous decision, have filled out the different categories to have their perception of it, uh, perspective of it, because there were so many differences that I read from from the different groups, and it really does concern me an awful lot that while the numbers are very low for the public having shown up, and even, I guess, for the faculty. Um, one, they were both very, very passionate and very opposite from what Alt wanted. Um, the people who felt, the number of people who felt that um, does not appear to be a good match for the needs of the district were, were highly overwhelming um, against Dr. Provost from the public, and um, very positive um, towards Ms. Kasna and um, the public also, Ms. Um, Hewitt, um, Jordana. Um, but that, that was what concerned me, is that um, if the alt, I just think that it was a very good letter writer, whoever wrote the letter for the administrative leadership team, wrote a very good persuasive letter and I didn't like it. I didn't like that if, 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 if the strengths of the, um, if the strengths had been written down, there, there was a big difference between the alt, between the three candidates. There were two that were more similar and it just seemed that they said, okay, this is who we want. And I didn't get a, a clear sense as far as why over the second person, when the second person, um, uh, Ms. Kasna, um, came very strong also. Um, so. I just don't think that we should discount the faculty or the public. I think the alt team is going to do wonderful no matter what. Uh, Mr. Meyer. So um, I guess that my, as someone who overvalues dissent, and that's just my bias, 
Um, I was, I had that same, and I shared um, with Ms. Hennessy when we crossed paths when we were going over the <coughs> review forms, that I do value the individual perspectives of the different administrative leadership team members so much that I wish I could have had the different forms rather than the one form. So one, one hypothesis could be that they are seeking, as they, as they do so well, to work together and make the decision easier for us. But there is an alternative hypothesis that could explain this, which is that they just really preferred one candidate. Mm -hmm. And you know, yeah, so I, and again, in in balancing the two hypotheses, I mean, I know that part of being a good team is recognizing that the team identifies the goal after del due deliberation and and moves toward it. Um, but I trust, you know, I trust that they take very seriously um, their roles as as providing us with input, and they don't shy away from that. And um, I had, I had conversations with members, you know, with administrators, where they did provide me with the specific reasons. Um, I, had, I had one administrator write me and convey that the administrative team was unanimous. And I actually emailed back and said, is this a joint letter? And she said, no, no, this is, you know, our judgment was unanimous, but this is my letter to you um, as one of your constituents in Ward 7. So, Again, you know, there's there's lots of salt um, here. There's there's yeah. grain of salt for small sample size, and and also, you know, when you do get a joint letter, um, you could people could potentially be camouflaging differences of opinion. But um, I, I tend to think that they they sincerely felt that one candidate was going to be the candidate that would work best to make this district a better district, a successful district, and uh, and. I've worked with them for a number of years now and trust, trust their judgment on this um, because, again, they have experience in working with a number of superintendents, interim superintendents, long-term superintendents, superintendents of short tenure, um, and uh, that's persuasive for me. Mr. Zahowski. I think with all that said, I'd, I'd like to make a motion, and I'd like to make a motion to instruct the uh, mayor, the chair of the school committee to contact uh, Dr. Provost and offer him the job of superintendent in Northampton. Subject to contract negotiation. Correct? Of course. Okay. Second the motion. Okay. So there's been a motion made by the vice chair uh, to, um, to uh, offer the appointment to Dr. Provost uh, subject to contract negotiation. Um, and there's a second on that motion by Ms. Nykerchuk. So there's an actual motion now on the floor. Um, any discussion or uh, about the motion that's on the floor? I would just like to um, urge people to consider the faculty and some of the statements as far as that they felt that they were less student-centered in a direct way and these, he, that he seemed further from the perspective of the classroom. And that he didn't give, he gave fewer specific examples and um, he was also honest and not afraid to say what people may not want to hear. So, I mean, I wanted to say something positive, too. But the idea of to improve his commute um, and the lack of passion that he seems to have along with it, I would agree with the faculty. And I'm just really concerned with going so far opposite to the faculty. We, we have, you know, 400 staff members in our district. And granted, most of them didn't come out. But the ones that did were very, very um, specific and and um, I value their opinion also, very much so, as well as the public. Um, however, we had such a small number of constituents come out from the public that um, it makes it really difficult to, to really give it a lot of weight. But I do give a lot of weight to the faculty, and I just wanted to, to state that. Thank you. Mr. Moore. Um, I would say a couple things here. One, I, I don't think it's true at all that there were no faculty or members of the community who supported provost and those things. Um, there were a number of people who did, so I don't think that's really here nor there. Um, I, I am, um, I'm, I'm com convinced by all the things that have been said here about um, John Provost um, that uh, you know he would be a good superintendent for us. 
and um, I, I, I will support this motion. I think that um, he's uh, clearly qualified, and I, and I think that um, much as what happens in a, in a political campaign, the, the losing side has the advantage of having made known sort of what some interests are, and the, the, the winning side should take those into account as they move forward. And I think um, all of us uh, would do well, while, you know, again, I support John Provost, to recognize that the things that people who were um, enthusiastic about um, Harper Ewart and uh, Kasna brought to the table, um, recognize that, that, that those are legitimate um, legitimate values in our community and that they should be as well sort of honored um, as we move forward. Other. Yeah, just I would like to just agree with what Howard said. I really do support um, Ms. Kasna um, and I worry about the fac lack of faculty support, but there was faculty <coughs> clearly who supported her. Um, I also didn't feel railroaded by the um, leadership team at all, but I would have liked to have heard a little bit more nuance. Um, but as I said at the beginning, all three were very um, qualified candidates, and so I, I would agree as part of the losing team, I'm going to support this, um, keeping in mind, hoping we keep in mind um, everything that else has been said. Mr. I hope I'm brief, and I, and I hope that um, I hope that there is no losing team on this. I hope that we'll yeah, yeah, you know. I'm sorry, that was a metaphor. A metaphor, there you go. I'm not familiar with those. Um, but I d also want to point out that I think there's a, and everyone's going to have to decide based on the data that we have in front of us to do it. But one thing about uh, follow up on Mr. Meyer's hypothesis, we seem to be saying that the small sample size of the faculty is representative of a united front of the faculty, but we don't seem willing to accept that the sample size of the all team is as united as it wants to be. So I just think that's just a little bit of a inconsistency that I just mm -hmm. wanted to point out. Okay. I guess just in closing, I would say that um, bringing, bringing uh, Dr. Provost forward um, by making the nomination, uh, I feel like as I sit at this table with all of you, I'm the person that was most invested in this process uh, as far as the, um, the oversight being the, the chair of the screening committee and then having the responsibility to, to um, let you all know of the, the three candidates. And uh, as I reflect back on the three, it, um, it's a difficult choice to make tonight because of the, um, as I said earlier, the qualifications of all three. And I'm very confident that um, the two that don't get offered a position here in Northampton will fulfill their dreams as a professional uh, goal to become a superintendent. So uh, I guess I take comfort in that because I, I think that this is a great district of which all three of these would be delighted to be part of. Um, and we had the we had the job tonight to pick the one that we thought would be the best for us by taking into consideration all the factors and all the um, groups within our community, from the teachers, the parents, the community, the administrative leadership team, and then as Ms. Minnick said earlier, um, each one of us who has the elected responsibility to represent uh, the different wards in the city uh, overall, not just those that have students in our public schools, but each person who resides in Northampton. And um, I think it's an honor and a privilege to sit here this evening and make such an important decision on their behalf because we were elected to do that. And so I'm confident in my nomination and um, I, I hope uh, you all would support it. I think on that note, I'll ask the clerk to call the roll on the vote. No. No. Ms. Anthony? Yes. Mr. Barry Meyer? Aye. Ms. Insider? Yes. Mr. Howard Moore? Yes. Mr. Terry Portia? Yes. Mr. Andrew Shelton? Yes. 
Yes. Yes. Okay, so the motion carries, and uh, the school committee has indeed voted to uh, appoint uh, Dr. John Provost the position subject to contract negotiations. So, um, with that, uh, we have no other business on this evening's agenda, and I would entertain a motion uh, to adjourn the meeting. Move to adjourn. Second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? This special meeting of the Northampton School Committee is adjourned.